Welcome everyone to Blue Collar Startup. I'm your host, Mike Nelson. Uh, we're on a Zoom today because we're with an organization called Boom Nation, and uh, they're a little bit away from where we are. So uh, we couldn't get everybody in the same room. So we're going to do Zoom, which is an exciting frontier for us. We don't do a lot of Zoom podcasts. So uh, hopefully this all goes well. And uh, Derek may or may not be jumping in. So uh, I know he's got a bunch of things going on. But, uh, you know, guys, I'm going to let you record. Uh, look, I'm going to let you introduce yourselves. Um, so, uh, Dave, Brent, who wants to go first? Tell us who you are and tell us what, tell us about Boom Nation. Yeah, sure, Michael. Thank you so much for having us. We're delighted yeah. to be here and, and pumped to be here. Love what you guys do. David and I have been listening to some of y'all's podcasts in preparation for this, and Thanks. it's spot on to who our community is and what we're about. So um, I'm a co-founder of Boom Nation. Uh, you know, we, we're a community of skilled workers. Uh, skilled workers, I think, give us the feedback all the time of finally somebody built something like this for us. So we're building technology for the forgotten workforce and helping connect them with jobs, bringing them entertainment, allowing them to network and connect with each other on our platform, learn about the trades, changing the perception of what it means to to have a career in the trades um, and really, you know, out there trying to make a dent in in what folks are calling the skilled worker shortage. And I think we'll talk a lot about that today, but it's not as advertised. And, you know, we're seeing some success on things that we're doing and, um just again, thank you for having us here. We're excited to talk about Boom Nation. Excited to, le excited to learn more about what you guys do and the folks that you talk to and um, yeah. pumped to be here. So thank you, Michael. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for coming. Uh, Dave, go ahead, go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, Michael, thanks for uh, letting us join in. Uh, I'm David Johnson. I'm one of the newer members of Boom Nation. Uh, joined the team uh, at the end of the summer this year. Kind of come from uh, some experience in the refining and petrochem world. Spent some time there, primarily around business development and sales and things of that sort. So I uh, came over to join with uh, Brent and uh, just trying to find ways that we can build our community. You know, we find ways that we are bringing in companies uh, that are the you know employers that are looking for uh, skilled workers, men and women to join their team. Uh, you know, common conversation that you hear around any industry tied to anything in construction these days is, where are the workers? And so Brent and the guys had started you know, developing Boom Nation a couple of years ago with that exact thought in mind. You know, how do you go to meet these people where they are? And at the end of the day, to understand and appreciate the personality types, the tendencies, and the things that make the community unique. And so you're going to have, you know, a lot of different trades represented across a lot of different areas of specialization. And I've done just enough of a little bit of everything to have exposure to, you know, several of those uh, types of companies and service providers that felt like, uh, you know, some of the experience that I had working with those companies selling services and goods before would give me an opportunity to come and hopefully make an impact to the community to where we're bringing together uh, people looking for jobs, companies that need those employees and, you know, matching good opportunities with good people. That's awesome. And uh, so I was, you know, obviously uh, taking a look at some of your social media and website and, and trying to learn a little bit more about you guys before you um, uh, before you came on. And I I want to hear about how this all came to came about, really. But before that, though, help me understand. So like it, it looks kind of like um, like I think you guys say it on your website, right? It's like, you know, you're you're not a recruiter. You're not a forum your community of people that's kind of bring So kind of explain a little bit more about how that works for, for people listening. Cause obviously, you know, workforce development and finding skilled labor and even unskilled labor in some uh, areas, but skilled labor itself is just such a hard thing to find all across the trades right now, mm -hmm. right? Everyone that we talk to, whether it's in construction, plumbing, electrical, could be welding, you know, I mean, you name it, it could be masonry. doesn't matter. Everyone is, uh, it's kind of struggling to find skilled labor. So tell us a little bit about how it all works. Yeah. So to kind of, you know, highlight on the question that everyone kind of gives and the same thing that you're asking there, everyone yeah. wants to know well, what is Boom Nation. And if you see our website and some of the information that we put out, we say that we are uh, more than a recruiter more and than not recruiter, just another say, job yeah. board, right? Yeah. yeah so yeah. I mean, it's just small stuff, but at the core of that, we still do recruiting services. Okay. We still have a job board that is one of the tools that we use to connect those people looking for jobs and the companies that want to hire them. 
but we don't stop there. There are plenty of products that are out of the market today that do those exact things. Uh, there are some very good recruiters in the business. Typically, those firms uh, have areas of specialization. They might be maybe more for corporate jobs, maybe, you know, your desk, white collar type position. You have people that might be looking for people in the medical field, anything like that. But there really wasn't anything that had been created, developed, and become very successful for the blue collar worker, you know, the skilled tradesman. And so that's an area that we jumped in to try to address, to try to find where these people are. Mm -hmm. Why is there such a perception of the lack of people to fulfill the jobs that are present? And we see some of those you know, common questions come up whenever we talk with uh, companies, HR departments, hiring departments, typically the hiring managers you know, that have recruiting departments trying to fill those positions for themselves uh, in their organization, they still don't end up being that uh, satisfied with the level of qualified people that end up uh, you know, coming through the system for whatever mm -hmm. reason. So to take a chance to kind of step back from that, um, what we've done is focused on building the community. And what we mean by that is, we do have a lot of uh, material content creation that goes out across all the social platforms. So you name, you know, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, all, all the different channels that you could think of where people engage in their day-to-day -day life because that's how they communicate with one another. That's how they seek out information today. And we put information there that's fun, entertaining, hopefully educational from time to time, but at least uh, there are some information that shares an opportunity for new positions, uh, opportunities for reskilling, upskilling, maybe taking the next step in someone's career path. And having that information for people to engage with mm -hmm. at all times of their employment, right? So obviously you're going to be looking for some of those things whenever you're looking for your next job because your current gig just ran out. Maybe you got laid off, maybe a project that you were all wrapped up, uh, maybe the company that you were with just didn't have anything else coming up, you know, for the next period. Well, you don't have the luxury usually of waiting another six to nine months before you go on another job. You need something today, right? So uh, we want to create content and engagement to where people come there on a regular basis to be entertained, to network with one another. And then if an opportunity shows up uh, on the, on the news feed or the job board in our app or those other platforms that we encourage them and make it, uh, easy for them to see if they're interested, take quick action, answer a couple of questions, and then be connected with those employers that want to put, put them to work quickly. So just trying to improve that process and think about things a bit different instead of, you know, the typical job board that might be, hey, we've got thousands of positions everywhere. What are you looking for? Come in and submit 150 applications and hope that you get two interviews out of it. It's just not good for the employers or the applicants. So looking to improve that situation for both parties. Yeah. I'd imagine that it, uh, you know, from just from a job board standpoint, like at some point there just becomes so much noise on that board. Right. And some of it's outdated. And, you know, I would imagine that that just really, you know, from an employer standpoint, you know, as an employer, uh, I, I would just, I'd look at something that I'd be like, well, oh, I got to weed through all that stuff. Right. So you guys are kind of using your typical recruiting, you're using your job board, you're, you're tying in some other, we'll say uh, digital activities and really facilitating the connection between that blue collar trade employer and the skilled laborer that's looking for something that's good fit. Um, I think the boom nation community is the bridge in between that experience, Michael. Yeah. You know, we started yeah. this because uh, employers weren't meeting workers where they are. And David touched on that. Right. And that's mm -hmm. a, that's a really simple way to say that, right. That everybody can understand. What that really means is, you know, most companies today are posting jobs on their company page and they are posting on job boards. Well, workers aren't going to the company page to apply, right, directly mm -hmm. there. And if they are on job boards, it is not a good experience. You just alluded to that, right? So, yes, we have those tools, but the way that our workers engage with us to you know, stand on the job board for a second is much more enjoyable and much more community driven. The core of what we do, though, we've got 750,000 plus workers in our community, mm -hmm. right? Blue collar folks, largest blue collar community from a from a platform community perspective in the company, right? 
And then we have at least 5,000 direct messages a month for workers reaching out to us to help them find work. Wow. Okay. So we're the bridge in between that experience and the workers out there trying to find opportunities and connecting them with the employers in a way in which they want to engage, right? In a way in which, um, you know, they just want to be, want to be treated, right? Through that, a nurturing experience like their family, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, Again, workers, they, they say, finally, someone built something like this for us, right? Hasn't been there in forever, maybe has never been there, right? And we've, you know, we've created that for them. And we take a lot of responsibility in that, right? Um, and to tell you an idea of kind of the power of the platform, you know, over the last 90 days, we've gone from reaching 40 something million to 78 million to, to over the last 30 days, 98 million people, wow. right? So something like Boom Nation, and we think that we do things really well. I mean, you know, we're biased, of course, but, you know, uh, the platform like Boom Nation is needed here. Right. And, and I think at the core of what it is, Michael, is it's a voice, right? It's a voice for the forgotten workforce. They feel at home. It's the right kind of content. They resonate with it. Um, and again, we feel a lot of responsibility for, for being that community, uh, not just to give that nurturing experience and to welcome them in and to be that bridge and to help them find what they want. Sometimes that's a job. Sometimes that's just support from other workers, right? And, and networking, communicating. Sometimes it's prideful to something they've just built or a project they're working yeah. on, right? It's a job site pick, right? But it's also a great responsibility that we feel to innovate, right? To build great technology in a modern way for this workforce that builds America. So that's what we're about, man. Yeah, it's amazing. And uh, so tell us a little bit about the technology. Like, so how, how does the, because really it's a platform, right? That you guys have built as far as what you do and how you do it and who you're working with. Uh, what, what can you kind of tell the the listeners about the platform itself? To use an analogy, I think it's a blend between like LinkedIn for blue collar and Barstool Sports for blue collar, <laughs> right? You know what I mean? Like it, it ain't that professional LinkedIn, but we got some of those tools that you got on LinkedIn. Yeah, yeah. It's that edginess of kind of Barstool Sports, right? That's great. We maybe don't go as far as they go, Right. Because we got we're also kind of representing employers on our platform, but it's got that edge to it. Yeah. That chip on your shoulder, just like our community has. Right. So, yeah, I think that's the best way to explain it without getting too technical with you. We can get we we get it if we want to. But yeah. But but it's important to mention one thing uh, of what ends up being different in the experience because of the way we're trying to utilize technology. Right. And one is, but if you are a person with a corporate job. You probably do most of your job searching on a laptop and you have an email address and you have a resume. Let's face it. That's not where most of the skilled workers are. Skilled workers tend to have their phone in their pocket. They communicate a lot through the other apps on you know, their phone. They're going to mm-hmm. have these other platforms and they do a lot of stuff through SMS text. So if we're going to be targeting that audience, we can't be trying to reach them, say, hey, go on this site you know, check out this job listing, send over your resume. They're not going to take the time to do it. They're not looking to spend, you know, 30 minutes or an hour filling out an application just to have a chance at maybe getting an interview. So what we like to do whenever we do like recruiting campaigns, which is what we found to be the most effective way that we have with matching those workers and employers. Yeah. As we go through, we create a digital ad. We'll have information that's very short, concise, and explains very quickly what the position is, maybe what the pay is, where it's located, and then it has a link for apply here. And if you click that link, it is probably somewhere between five and 10 questions that are typically yes, no answers at that point. And it's the most important five or 10 questions to see one, are you interested in the position? And do you meet the most high level pre-screening that we can do at that point? And we might do a round or two of that, and then we send those applicants that get through those two rounds over to the employers to where they don't have all that noise that you were talking about. So yeah. they're actually looking at people that are in the target audience with the background, the certification, the skill sets that they're looking for, as opposed to hundreds and hundreds of applications with a hope of maybe getting five or 10 people out of it. So uh, that takes a little bit of uh, creativity, a little bit of crafting, and a little bit of Uh, very open dialogue between us and those companies as we are developing those campaign questions in the beginning, because we need to highlight what is important. And if you're going to say that 
someone needs to have uh, five years experience, well, that's great. We'll put that on the question, but is that a requirement or is that a nice to have? What if you have a yeah. jam up guy that only has four years experience, but you know has all these other skill sets you're looking for and is willing to take a job in the market that you're you know searching to fill for the pay rate that you're wanting to pay? Do you want to give that guy a shot or not? And whenever you start looking at two uh, processes that are driven too heavily by technology, then you get into people that either are yes or no, black and white. As we all know, as anyone who's hired more than one or two people for your company, the yes, no, black or white only carries you so far. You're right. going to miss out on some really good opportunities that hire great people to add to your team. And you're going to make some decisions to bring some people on that just don't fit the culture. And so the a better job that we can do with screening applicants to get to a point of generating a conversation of quality information to be shared by that employer and that applicant, the more effective they can be in determining who's a fit for their company and who is not and ultimately putting them to work and moving on with their projects as opposed to spending so much time on this you know, never ending cycle of uh, higher on board, replace, hire on board, replace yeah. that goes on all too often. And do you guys work with, you know, obviously, so I'm sure that some companies out there uh, are really good at knowing who their ideal fit is and having the right questions to ask and all these, you know, the things that um, you would need to be able to make a successful hire. Uh, do you work with the the clients and what with the employers the, that are doing that, that are hiring? Do you work with them to help them kind of craft their process to help them with questions? Or do you just really stick on the uh, finding the candidate side of things? Yeah, we, we absolutely do. I mean, it's where we've seen the most success. So we know how to drive traffic, right? Mm -hmm. And when there was a period of time where like, you know, really driving a lot of traffic, but um, you know, not having the kind of engagement on the employer side that we we really needed, right? In order them, you know, contacting our candidates, and um, we're still doing you know a lot of work there to try to communicate with those personnel offices and hiring centers and teaching them how to do it, right? How to nurture the candidates, and yeah, um, in some cases they don't have the administrative capacity to do it, so we take on some of that with some with some services. Oh, nice. Um, but yeah, but yeah, we we spend a lot of time with them. And Michael, I think the, you know, the secret sauce that like we think about everything as campaigns to our community. Right. Mm -hmm. And so we'll work with the partner on crafting. You know, we try to keep it to three to five questions. Sometimes it's more to that, but three to five questions that you really need to be able to pre-screen this applicant and get them in touch with someone in the field, typically a hiring manager, right, a foreman, a project manager, a supervisor that can have a two minute conversation with this skilled worker and then know whether or not they need to send them to HR to process, right? So like that process in a lot of the organizations that we speak with is backwards. Yep. They try to get them directly into HR, fill out a 15 minute application, and then send them to send them to the hiring manager in order to have a conversation. Well, the drop off on an application literally is 92%. So 92% of people that start an application abandon it. Is, right? that, is that a real number? Real number. Yeah. Holy moly. Real that's number. huge. So Michael, that's part of the reason of why this shortage exists. Again, it's not as advertised, right? Mm -hmm. Like we are forcing skilled workers into a 15 minute application in order for them to be considered for a job and maybe have a chance to talk with someone. Right. And, and, you know, so we think about everything as recruiting campaigns to our community. So we'll do a, you know, a short form skilled based hiring again, meeting workers where they are. What do they want to know? You know, what information do they want to give? Right. Yeah. And we've, we've done a lot of A-B testing on these forms that we've built internally of how to um, how to get workers excited about filling it out. Is it free form? Is it sliding scale? Is it, you know, drop down? How do they want to answer this particular question? Right. And so our conversion rate is much, much, much higher than a 92 percent or an 8 percent conversion rate that you get yeah. on a traditional job board. Um, God, that sounds awful. <laughs> Eight percent well, of candidates, well, right? Like, but that's that's the reality. Think about it this way, Michael. Then you know, think about the fact of uh, trying to meet workers where they are, and everybody wants to reach the newer generation of people coming in because we need yep. to fulfill this pipeline coming in of people to start on one level and kind of progress up, right? Does everybody know the acronym TLDR? Very common for the young generation right now. Too long, didn't read. You'll see it on chat boards. 
You'll see it on uh, social platforms everywhere else. Just like if you put a long dissertation email into, you know, instructions for someone to do, comments for something to take, send them email that's too wordy, they're just going to tell you flat out, I ain't reading it. I ain't reading it. I'm on to the next one. Guess what? That applies to your application too. Too long. So didn't, companies I, actually are thinking didn't, I didn't know that actually. <laughs> <laughs> I'm old. We, we get to yeah. live and breathe this a little bit more because we're trying to reach those people, right? We're spending some yeah. time at uh, trade schools, at career fairs. We're looking for those people because everyone says, oh, there's no one coming out, you know, these days into the trades. Man, we've gone to career fairs and we have guys lined up with their resumes going, hey, I'm trying to get a job. I just got my certification or we're finishing next week or whatever the case is. And they'll go to apply. There will be companies at the same career fair looking to hire people with their certification. And the first question they have for them is, how many years experience do you have? Zero. I just finished my certification. I'm trying to get my foot <laughs> in the door. I'm trying to get started, right? What are you looking for? And so there's this whole misalignment that goes on with where people are, what they're wanting to do, and what companies are trying to do to fit people that have no idea just yet about working in the industry into their organization. Mm -hmm. So there's all these little tweaks that come that we get exposed to those things on a little bit more regular basis because it's all we're doing day in and day out is engaging yeah. with these community members. And everyone from the skilled uh, journeyman that's you know, got decades of experience in the industry, maybe started up their own business, to the people that maybe they just graduated high school 18 months ago, went to vocational school and decided they wanted to do something that they heard there was great earning potential with. And they just looked for their first uh, gig to get going, get their foot in the door and get those years of experience. And so, you know, that's one of the things that was really good about unions for a long time. They really led the way was having these progression plans where you could come in as an apprentice or a helper yeah. and get started in the early stages get some job skills, learn about the dependability, spend some time with experienced people in the field. And those that did well with that had the opportunity to move up over time as they demonstrated whatever they needed to, to progress in those programs. The other companies that are open shop have had those as programs as regimented as unions did. But I think we could take a page out of the union's book and we could say, hey, what are we doing to get those people new to the trades, new to the industry? What positions do we put them in? What does a successful progression plan look like? How do we make the most out of that generation of workers that's going to be aging out in the next five to 10 years? What better opportunity would you have to partner up those guys with a person that's, you know, in the early stages of their career and allow some of that experience to be transferred from generation to generation? In order to do that, you have to understand who you're dealing with, though. And too often, companies are made up by guys like us in the decision you know, process that's trying to hit those milestones and productivity targets and everything today. And you're looking at fulfilling the jobs the same way they were done whenever we were starting our, our career. Well, guess what? There's been other things that have changed over that time, too. So we just have to make those adjustments to try to make the best of the workers that are available and those people that are expressing interest. It's hard to get take guys like to... us. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just going to make one of my usually not funny jokes and say, uh, when you said Don't guys, do like it. Us, uh, yeah, Derek, there's Derek. What's up? <laughs> hey guys, uh, I didn't want to interrupt. I'm listening here. No, you're fine. Uh, uh, two things. One, uh, do you guys just see that thumbs up that just happened on the screen when you were talking? Yeah, I got a funny story. It's probably that. me. That I talk with my joke? hands too much. In the does, it, does it like do <laughs> that? In the yeah, it does. Yeah, it, it is. Yeah. Watch this. It is. Yeah. It looks like if you go that way. Wow. That, yeah. Like, so you I just learned two things. We use the other fingers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I just, I just learned that I don't know what TLDR is and zoom yeah. now has thumbs up, thumbs down emojis on the screen. That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, but I was going to say, David, uh, when you were saying guys like us, did you mean like old guys that don't know what TLDR is or uh, what do you mean guys like us? I'd say maybe if you were born before 2000. <laughs> All right. That's fair. That's right? fair. That's very I'm diplomatic. way before 2000 myself, but you start thinking about the ages, you know, just coming in. Yeah. And uh, look, Brent and I both started working in, in construction and trades and different things whenever we were in school, because that's how we had to earn to get our, our asses through school, right? I mean, yeah. what else were you going to do? Were you going to go work at Chili's or Applebee's like so many other people do? Well, I was fortunate enough that I had uh, a grandfather and my father that taught me some real work skills 
living in the country. Grandfather was a, a welder, a shade tree mechanic, and a farmer, right? So I knew how to do things like fix fence. And so by the time I got to school, there was an opportunity for me to make $10 an hour instead of $6 an hour, you know, something mm-hmm. like that. Um, thank goodness I had that experience because it set me up for those first couple of jobs after graduation that has you know, turned into a, a very good career for me. But you look at the guys that were born after 2000, everybody's being told uh, you need to go to college. You need to go saddle yourself with a couple hundred thousand dollars worth of debt. Yeah. You need to get a degree. And guess what? They still end up working at Chili's and Applebee's. Yeah. And then they're not very happy with their choice. So what do you do with those people that made that decision? And now they're looking for their next step. Guess what? It's never too late. If you're not happy with what you're doing, go back, get a certification, hire on somewhere. I tell you, there's plenty of construction companies out there that would love to have somebody in their mid, late, 30s, 40 years old, that knows something about work ethic, that they're either going to live or die, eat or starve based on the amount of effort they put into a job. If they want to go sign up for an apprentice with one of these companies and they want to start at the bottom and work their way up, I guarantee there's going to give those guys an opportunity too. We may just have to swallow our ego a little bit, our pride, and step back and say, "I'm, I'm fine starting at the bottom. I've been there before. I'll work back through again. But guess what? There's a lot of pride that comes with a job well done, seeing a project completed, you know, having the knowledge that when you get to the end of the job, you can be that dad that goes through the uh, town going, I built that, I built that, yes. I built that, you know, <laughs> anybody that's been around construction has had those uh, conversations with somebody. And look, there's a lot of pride that comes from that. So why be ashamed of it? Why second guess it? If you're not happy with what you're doing and you hear about the shortage in the trades. Yeah. You know, take the opportunity for yourself. A lot of work out there for sure. Michael, we've got people coming on our platform every day asking, how do I get involved? Some people that are in white collar jobs, right? A lot, lot of yeah. young kids just getting in, in, into careers and saying, hey, I want to get in the trades. How do I do it? Right. As part of that networking that occurs on our platform in our community. Right. But we've even got folks that are working in a cubicle, you know, saying, hey, how do I get in? Right. Has anybody made the jump? What does that look like? We just did a post this week, I think maybe yesterday about somebody that, you know, posted that comment on our newsfeed, right? But it's all, it's hard to get in. Yeah. And it's all, it's a little intimidating to get in too, right? And it's and it's also hard to stay in. Right? And so, you know, look, like let's get real here for a sec. 1.2 million people leave construction every year. Top they 3 areas it. they leave it. Top 3 areas they go to administrative, manufacturing, and retail. And it's not because it's higher pay. It's because it's more consistent pay. The number one reason they leave is because they missed a paycheck or two. They couldn't find another job, Michael. That's crazy. Because they, yeah, like that's real data. There's so many. I mean, every single day we talk to businesses. That, that's crazy to me that anyone is, is doesn't have work if they're if we, they're a skilled laborer. Like we we've had people on our platform that are perfectly credentialed, willing to work. They're at home for two weeks. They come on our platform and they've matched up with an employer and the project that they had never heard about the employer before. All right. The project that they matched up with was 15 minutes away from their front door. Wow. In in two weeks at home, hourly worker, not earning any pay. Have like, had they not made that connection, you're at risk of losing that person from the industry forever. And like, that's where the rubber meets the road here. Right. Yeah. And then from from young kids, the retention or the uh, the churn rate's almost even worse. So twenty five and twenty five years old or younger, the churn rate is sixty five percent. So like that's the doom and gloom. Well, it's not. It's real, right? Like that's yeah. what's happening. But the good news is like it's solvable. Like we can solve. Yes, we got to recruit new people in. New people want to come in though, right? Like yes, I feel we like more recruit- and more, right? Like the more. Yeah. Uh, the more I talk to people, the more I see that, you know, late, oh, there's that train I was telling you guys about. I don't know if you can hear that or not. Um, I'll see if he blows his horn or not. Uh, but the more people I talk to, the more I see, like, you know, younger people, 18, 19, 20, 21, that are either coming into or interested in the trades. They're talking about being blue collar. They want to be blue collar, which is uh, pretty refreshing. Um, and so it's interesting. Uh, 
just seeing kind of that dynamic shift where, you know, not everybody wants to be a, a video game designer anymore. Uh, like it was like five years ago, everyone I talked to, you know, like, especially from a, a marketing standpoint, we'd be hiring and everybody uh, was coming out of college because they wanted to be video game designers. And guess what? There's no work for them. Right. And nope. it's like, man, man, if we could only get every uh, one of the guys that has the Bass Pro Shop trucker hat and the Carhartt jacket and, uh, you know, baggy pants that's walking around the streets these days into the trades, the shortage would be solved <laughs> overnight. It'd be solved quick, right? That's right. Um, so I wanted to ask you guys uh, I, so many questions, but I know, you know, I want to make sure that we're we're keeping us on time here. Um but tell us, how did this all get started, uh, Brent? I, like, was this just you guys had the need or you saw the need or uh, someone was like, hey, you know, I've got, you know, how did it all get get going? I mean, I think it was saw the need. So I, I mentioned like employers weren't meeting skill workers where they where they are. Right. Mm -hmm. And like at the time we started and it's not quite as much today, but it still happens. Like there were lines of workers, sometimes by the hundreds. Right. Like trying to fill out applications for like a big project that's going on. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and they also like workers didn't know where all the jobs were and employers didn't know where the workers were. Right. And so, um, look, I'm from Lake Charles, Louisiana, you know, blue collar town. Um, you know, my class was kind of the first, first class in high school where they took the shop class out. Right. Um, so have a bunch of buddies that went right out of high school and, and went and worked in the trades. And while we were kind of messing around in college the first couple of years, you know, by junior year, they were foreman and they had toys and they owned their house, right? So I've seen yeah. that story. Um, you know, uh, I was telling somebody earlier today, you know, don't regret anything, um, you know, in the path that I had. But I do think that if someone had told me the incredible opportunities that exist in the trades and not just, um, look, one of the best jobs I ever had was working as a laborer on a turnaround. Loved the people, right? Some of the best and smartest people I've ever been around, right? Um, had someone showed the story or told the story to me of you can get in, um, you can make a good living, you can be outside, and here's the career path that you might be able to take. Maybe you grow within a company. Maybe it's foreman, supervisor, project manager, scheduler, planner, right? And then executive, where you're leading teams and executing on projects, right? Um, maybe it's you go the entrepreneurial route, right? Um, I was telling a story this morning. There's a there's a gentleman from my hometown that started out as an underwater welder. Then he had a crew, right? Um, and he eventually built a business. It's a billion dollar business, Michael. Yeah. Right. Like those are the kind of stories that aren't being told. Maybe they're not being told loud enough, right? And that's part of what we're trying to do to change the perception of what it means to have a career in the skilled trades. The other thing that people aren't talking about, and you talk about this video game, you know, developers and the people mm -hmm. that want to get into that, like that stuff exists here, man. Like there is incredible, like technological innovation that is happening in this space. And if you're interested in it, like get in. Yeah. Take, like construction's, I think, world's second largest industry, right? And it's only adopted from a technological perspective somewhere between like 10 and 20%. We got 80% to go, man. Yeah. In the world's second largest industry, right? So if you're a video game, if you're if you're a video game programmer, right, and you're having trouble finding a job, look at this industry, right? So that's the story that we're trying to tell. So it came from that. Um, and then look, we started to kind of evaluate, like, all right, well, what tools should we use to try to help solve this problem? Right. So you got these employers that are out there looking for workers. You got these workers that are out there looking for jobs. And then you got employers posting on job boards and workers don't know where the jobs are. So it was like, OK, some kind of community needs to exist. Right. And what kind of tool uh, do we need to use? What kind of technological tool do we need to use in order for some kind of community to exist? Right. It was a marketplace. Right. Two sided marketplace, if you will. Right. So kind of like LinkedIn. Michael, we kept we're like, there's no way. There's no way something like this doesn't exist. That's too simple of a concept, right? So for the first couple of years, like constantly looking over our shoulder, right? Like for sure, someone a lot smarter than we are is going to just start something or it's already out there and we're not aware of it and they're going to catch us, right? Um, and it just kind of never came along. There were other players out there and there were some that would launch up and there still are today. Right. And there's going to be competition here, Michael, like this is a big need. 
right? Yeah. And honestly, it's a big enough problem where, like, I mean, I have the. It may not just be Boom Nation that exists. There may be two or three players like Uber and Lyft or something like that, right? It's that big of a problem. So that's kind of how it came about. And look, I mean, we've, you know, we're a startup, so we've ebbed and flowed a little bit. You know, we've really pushed the community and tested things at sometimes. We've built enterprise products like workforce communication tool and hey how does that work right like like where where is the friction point or where is the uh, the inception point that we really need to solve for right mm -hmm. um and ultimately kind of that original vision i think is what what we need to continue to try to solve for that community that we're moving the friction out of a job search or opportunity or am i available when do i want to work when, when can i work what are my skills actual skills Right. Do I have the certifications? And OK, great. I check a box. But can I actually do what that certification says? Right. And then who's the connection within the company that will nurture me? Right. To get hired onto that company and through a career. Um, and how can we highlight those companies? Right. Um, within our community, they're part of our yeah. community. Right. And how can we continue to tell the story and highlight those workers and connect them and help them find opportunities? So, um yeah, that's kind of how it came about. And kind of have, yeah. And, and how so, long have you guys been been doing this now? I mean, look, we were a couple guys for a couple years that just I wouldn't even call it a real company. You know, it was sure. just a passion project where we were tinkering with stuff. I'll tell a little story. So there's been some green lights along the way. So when we first launched, uh, you know, within the first two weeks, we broke into the top 100 apps. Okay, like zero marketing dollars, like really didn't know what the hell we were doing, Michael. And that that was an indication. That was a green light of like, wait yeah. a second, like this is a need, right? Um, and we had other stuff where we got tactical, like, you know, we um, 123 truck drivers out in Wyoming over the course of seven days, 48 um, welders, um, qualified welders within two or three days, stuff like that. Now, you know, um, Th those were the early days of being able to target right um, at a much higher level than you can today. Maybe after the um, some of the privacy stuff has gotten a little bit um, yeah. more strenuous, but um, we can still target really well today, right? So, um, uh, but I, I would say we've kind of been a real company, you know, um, year and a half, two years, something like nice. that. Nice, yeah. So that's yeah. huge growth, man. Yeah, it's come a long way. Yeah, yeah I just want to so say the. Uh... Your your marketing, your website, everything is uh it it's on point. It's fantastic. I checked it out yesterday. So uh yeah, sharp. Congrats to you both. Derek, Thank you. Look, we, 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 we voice. Yeah. <laughs> the voice of God. Um, <laughs> we uh we got a great team. And like it and and not, I mean, look, simple is the name of the game on the front end how people sure. interact with the community, how they come onto the community, the information they fill out, how we match, right? Like simple and intuitive is the name of the game on the front end. On the back end, make no mistake, super sophisticated, right? Like incredible teams, scalable processes, scalable infrastructure, right? Um, and the great thing about most of the people on our team, if not all, I'm trying to think, I think all, um, have some kind of experience in the trades, whether yeah. that's them personally or the people around them that they really care about. They get it. They've seen, they've seen, they've seen both success stories and struggles, right? And both of those are important to understand because it's it's what the trade what the trades are right now. Yeah. Right. And so we're trying to you know make those success stories. Uh, you know, much, much more consistent than those struggles. But right now, let's be honest, those struggles honestly are, are uh, more prominent than what the success stories are. Sure. So those are some of the things we're working on. That's awesome. What, um, so if, uh, I know we're getting short on time. So what, if you were going to, uh, you know, give employers one piece of advice as far as how they can, uh, you know, refine their hiring process or, or, or something that's going to help them, uh, you know, obviously, you know, signing up for what you guys do, right. It's going to help them. Uh, what else would you say to the employers as far as the hiring or finding talent? I mean, what, what's, what's the magic, uh, the magic bullet. I'd like to take a chance to ruffle some feathers if I can. Yeah. We All love right. the ruffle feathers here. Well, look, we Please have to do. talk about real shit because if we don't, we're not doing anyone a favor, right? Sure. 
And so if you're going to be in the community, you've got to live it, breathe it, and you have to be willing to contribute whenever you see something happening. So I think most business people, business owners, managers in these companies would agree that we believe that the market will work. Whenever you're talking about selling your service to your customers, when you're talking about the increasing cost of products coming through and you're having to have conversations with your customers about change orders because of inflation, job costs, all these other things, we know that changing costs are to be expected and must be managed. We know that market factors and conditions play a huge role in that. But we start talking about recruiting and trying to attract new talent. So many times we look back to just whatever the average wage is for a particular area or a trade, and we hope that that information is up to date. Maybe what it was a year ago, five years ago, all these other you know, factors that we try to put in. But at the end of the day, we know that if you have more jobs and you're able to fill with the number of people that you are attracting, what is the number one way to get new attention? You're going to have to use rates that make it attractive to someone else to want to join your team. Sure. If you are the very best paid company of your type in your market with a good culture, people are going to want to work for you. If you pay enough, there's going to be people lining up for their opportunity just to have a shot to join your team. That means that your rates are not going to be the lowest rates in the market. They can't be or your company is not going to survive. But most companies pride themselves on the quality of work that they turn in, the uh, environment of their company and their culture, how safely they're able to do a job, the fact that they can guarantee that they're going to come in to deadlines on time, on budget, all of those things. Guess what? That all carries a cost with it. Having the best tradespeople in the business, guess what? That has a cost too. Yeah. So what we see all of the time is timing is the most important thing in trying to find people that are available when the timing works for them, where, you know, they're looking for an opportunity and your ability to respond to them quickly and get them on board as soon as they want to come. But then the pay rates that you offer and advertise will do more to drive traffic than any marketing message you push out, any creative content, anything else. At the end of the day, everyone's doing this to earn a living and provide for their family. So I just challenge those companies to sit back and evaluate what have happened with the salaries of every other position in the company as cost of living has gone up, as inflation has been an issue, as market conditions have just affected the cost of labor as a whole. Yeah. Then look back and you think about what the driving force is behind the work being done in the field. I think if everyone would just take a, you know, enough time to answer those questions and dig deep, most of them would decide that maybe they're willing to pay a little bit more than average because they view themselves as being more than average. So tell them to stop being cheapskates. Yes. Yeah. That's, <laughs> I think, I think, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I, it's true. Look, and, you know, that's a tough thing to say to people, right? Yeah. Like nobody wants to have that conversation. It is true, right? Um, but let's also, you know, be very clear here. We're not saying that pay alone, like, solves the problem, okay? Yeah. So David mentioned timing, right? Okay. So um, time kills deals, Michael, all right? And some of the employers that we've worked with before, it has been three days, seven days, 14 days before they've worked, they've called a candidate list, right? And so, and some of that has to do with the, it, it, it's not because they're not great people. They are, right? The best employers on our platform that are getting folks hired are ones that they get after it. When a worker comes in, they contact them and they don't stop at one call, right? Some of the activity we've seen is we've seen a list worked, right? And there's a comment of like left a message. All right. And like there's there's this there's this attitude of, well, I called them, I tried. Right. And it's like, well, they're on a project. They're they're working right now, right? You got to You gotta nurture that 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 pipeline, right? You've got to nurture that relationship that you've got with the worker and give them the kind of experience 
and the culture that you talk about that your company has from the first interaction that you have with them. You're not competing anymore with the experience that your competitor has and that your industry has, especially with these young kids and honestly with everybody today, right? Michael, you're competing with experiences that people have every day in their life. And there's one that I like to use because every most everybody has experienced this before. You get an iPhone. That iPhone comes in the mail and it's a very intentionally designed box, right? And it opens up perfectly. You open it up, you power it on, and it's so intuitive that within a minute, you know exactly how to use it. And your kids know how to use it too. Like that's the experience that you're competing with. And try to put a a young person especially, but anybody that's had that experience into the experience, the average experience that exists today, there are great companies that we work with that are that are doing an incredible job. Mm-hmm. But the average experience that exists today just isn't cutting it from a nurturing, recruiting, um, culture building process and bringing people into your company. So yes, pay. Yes, pay, paying people what they're worth, right? Um, and but I, I think most importantly, you know, treating them well in the way that you're saying that the com- the that your the culture of your company is from the first interaction that you have with them. That's amazing. Uh, so, if guys, if if people want to learn more about you, about Boom Nation, about how to do that uh, with the help of you guys, uh, how how do they find you? Where do they where do they go? Yeah, thank. I- Connect with us on any of our channels, right? You can always go to boomnation.com. It's one word, boomnation.com. Contact us. Um, you know, it's easy to find us. Um, we respond very quickly. Um, you can direct message us on all, any channel we're on. Um, we'll, we'll respond there or come to the website. Um, there's, a, there's a contact us button and, and uh, we'll call you within a few minutes. So we're easy to find, Michael. That's awesome. It's amazing. And uh, guys, I, I appreciate it. Uh, appreciate you coming on board, uh, doing the show with us. Um, I'm going to take a, a quick second too. I just wanted to uh, say thanks to the folks over at MLB Construction. Uh, they recently uh, wrote, sent us a big, or wrote us a big check. We got actually got to put that up on social media, but uh, wrote us a check to uh, help donate some money to uh, workforce development. Really, actually, we're uh, working with HVCC, a couple of their programs, uh, trying to donate money to help some of the students. And then uh, we're also we're doing some work with BOCES as well, local uh, BOCES program, and same thing, trying to donate some money. So uh, you know, we've had a few sponsors come on board doing helping us. With that, MLB being the the most recent one of those, also the Michaels Group, Luke Michaels from the Michaels Group came to the same thing. So, uh, but I just want to say thanks to our sponsors for helping us to uh, you know give back to the community, blue collar and trades, and uh, thanks everybody for listening. And guys, thanks again for coming on board. Uh, happy holidays, Merry Christmas. Thank you for having us. Merry Mike. Christmas, yeah, great Thank holiday season. Merry Christmas. Yeah, absolutely. Too, thanks again, guys. And uh, thanks again to everybody who's listening. We are currently number 11 of the top 25 blue collar podcasts, uh, according to Feedspot. I don't know how they do that ranking, but we thank them for that number 11. But we, we are obviously competitive. We want to hit number one. Uh, I, you know, thank God Boom Nation's got such a killer uh, social media following. I know they're going to share the show. But uh, if you're listening, guys, make sure you share the show too. Help us get to that number one spot. Appreciate it. Thanks again, everybody. Thanks, guys.